Good afternoon, my friends. This is the Grim Flare, and I hope you're all doing very well today. We are going to get into some more tournament practice lobby adventures, and we're playing a, a list that might surprise you, not to get too clickbaity, but it really might surprise you. Um, but first, a, a couple quick things. Number one, I just want to point out the glory and the beauty of this video that I just made. Not the video itself, I'm, I'm not that arrogant, but the, the comment section, the glory and beauty of the comment section. We have just absolutely incredible commentary going on, specifically this uh, interaction between Renato and Dan. Um, some really, really high-value conversations going on here, in my opinion. Renato, in particular, has a pretty interesting take on on a lot of, um, you know, on a lot of cards that, that can see play in a deck like ours. So, um, and Dan, as always, is, is very insightful. So, if you guys have not read through this comment section, taken the time to to read all of this stuff, um, not just the conversation between these two guys, but just in general, lots of really good insights. I have a really, what, what seems to be a really, uh, a, a viewership that skews toward the, the intelligent and the thoughtful. So I just want to say thanks to everybody for making even the comment section on these videos a joy to participate in and a joy to read. And I wanted to give the people who don't necessarily check those out the admonition to probably do so. Like, you're going to get some some pretty cool takes on things here. It might give you some new ideas. Um, the other thing we, we have to do here is give a shout-out to some patrons. So for those of you who maybe only watch gameplay videos, you haven't heard the shout-out to our two newest patrons as of earlier this week, Ronald Poon and Kenny Nguyen, who are a confidant and a tireless, respectively. So thank you again, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And on top of Ronald and Kenny, we have yet another new patron to thank. Mark Williams is a brand new patron, um, our newest one, and Mark Williams is also a member of the tireless here. So very generous of you, Mark. Thank you so much, my friend. Very glad to have your support. And as always, to all patrons, old and new, to the new bloods and the OGs, I thank you so much. You make all of this possible. So, with that out of the way, like I said, you know, do yourself a favor and take a look at the comment section on, on this video here. Definitely one that is well worth looking into, in my opinion. And then, we also, as a bit of a segue, have a surprise deck list, like I said, that we're going to be running through some, some practice matches today. And this is, in fact, the list that I analyzed in the video I just referred to. This is the latter of the two lists. This is Nicolas Sanchez's list. And as you saw, if you watched that video, his list really appeals to me in a lot of different ways. Um, I have made two changes. I resist the urge to make more. These two changes are more out of necessity. Um, than anything else. Number one, I am not playing the third overgrown tomb, even though I'm kind of curious as to why he has the third one. That was one of the bigger question marks for me as far as his deck building went. But I didn't really feel like buying a third tomb because I just don't think it's correct. And I don't think I'm ever going to play a third tomb, but I, I could be wrong. So I'm willing to stand corrected if anyone has some insight into that, but for now, I replace that with an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, because I am interested in continuing to test this card. So, not exactly a like-for-like -like switch by any means, but it's just a, a swap I made, you know, like I said, because I didn't really feel like buying the Overgrown Tomb. Um, speaking of not feeling like buying things, Surgical Extraction is just about 50 ticks, and I ha picked up a second one for this, but... I did not pick up a third because, uh, oh, that's just like when, when a digital card, when pixels on a screen are multiple times more expensive than the paper version. I don't know, maybe I'm old fashioned. I just can't really, I, I can't really do that with a smile. So I, um, I, and I'm, as you know, if you've watched my deck techs, I am still a fan of the more value oriented graveyard hate plan involving lots of Nile spell bombs. So I, I met Nicholas halfway, 
My own list right now plays three Spellbomb, one Extraction. His list is the inverse. It plays three Extraction, one Spellbomb. I met him halfway. I picked up a second Extraction. I can I can see playing two in the future myself. I'm not going to go any further than that, though. So, But we've got some interesting stuff going on here. If, if you haven't seen my video, perhaps check it out, uh, analyzing his list. But some stuff you don't always see, like Triple Kitchen thinks. We are very, it's Grind City. We got four Confidant and four Tracker. So without further ado, let's have some fun. Let's go on some adventures in the tournament practice lobby. And uh, see how this very grindy setup goes. It's a very grindy, but it's also very low curve. So an appealing combination, I must say. We've lost the die roll. All right, I quit. This deck sucks. <laughs> Hand looks good to me. Hand looks very, very good to me. No matter what they're up to, we should be able to put something together. And our opponent has mauled as well. Mountain. Pass. All right, it's Inquisition time. All right, this is some kind of a combo deck I'm not exactly familiar with. They've got the Priest that adds mana. I guess I just take the Bushwhacker here. I'm not really sure what's up. But they have mismatched mountains, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how to feel about that. That said, that's a pretty cool mountain. And that's a John Avon mountain, so I'm not hating that one either. Sometimes you just gotta have the variety, I guess. Alright, they will pass. And it's time for us to play the Tarmogoyf. I guess we will... I guess we're gonna fetch a forest to... Uh... I guess we don't need to do that quite yet, do we? We don't need to quite do that, so we won't. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should know if I should be recognizing this deck. Infernal Plunge, Priest of Ourobrosk. You've got me. Runaway Steamkin, okay. Remind myself what this thing does. Gets counters whenever you cast a red spell. And then you can remove three to add three. Got it. Well, unless they have something... We get blown out if they have something zero mana in hand, like a gut shot, I guess. But... I still think we should go for the super high upside of kill this thing by taking the Liliana up seems really good. Well, we appear to be in fantastic shape, don't we? I do love this deck, guys. I do love the good old Golgari deck. Experimental Frenzy. Okay. Okay. Well, now they're putting some stuff together. So, you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play it. You can't play cards from your hand. They've got Plunge and Priest in hand. So, they're not doing all that much right now with the cards in their hand. So, I think I'm just supposed to trophy that thing away. It's also going to grow the Tarmogoyf. We've had a pretty nice draw, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, 6-7 Goyf seems okay, huh? And 
they're just facing lethal. Like, our Tarmogoyf's turned the corner so quickly. Lily's been amazing. That's that. All right, well, I can't claim to be an expert on how to sideboard against this deck, so I I might be doing something wrong here, but I assume we just want ways to kill um, Experimental Frenzy. Golgari Charm also has, seems to line up pretty well against those X1s they've showed us. I don't know about any of this other stuff, to be honest. I don't really know about Collective Brutality or Surgical. I mean, I... Like I said, I don't really know exactly what their deck is up to, right? So maybe we err on the side of, of conservatism with that in mind. Um, maybe one Collective Brutality is still fine. I'm not really sure, frankly, what to shave either. Abrupt Decay can't hit Frenzy, but am I worried about something like Blood Moon? Perhaps. Um... Nah, it's a Steamkin deck, so I want my Fatal Pushes. Yeah, I'm, I'm... All my stuff seems fine, so... I guess the conservative sideboarding is warranted. The big question is what comes out. I really don't know. Maybe we will cut a Brutality. And it's either Decay or One Push, perhaps? Or maybe we just lose a Threat. I'm going to cut a scavenging ooze. Might be horribly wrong. Maybe I should be trimming away other things, but... As always, my friends, let me know. Let me know what's up. Let me know how to side against this thing. If you have any idea yourself, my hand is fine. Double Bob can be... Um, a little bit slow, a little less than ideal on the draw, but I don't know how quickly they can really pressure my life total, so... And Inquisition was a good draw. Mad Blind Mountain. Shuffle your library. That's spicy with, uh... With what's it called? With the good old experimental frenzy. Alright, they kept the one-lander... And they've got a couple of rituals, one of which requires a sacrifice. They've got a wild canter, a couple bushwhackers. Okay, this is a super interesting decision. Hmm. I think I should take one of the creatures they can play now, and I guess Wild Canter is just a little bit better than Memnite. Alright, they found a Relic for a turn. I mean, they yeah, have... Still not exactly sure what the what the line there was, to be honest. Um, and right now... Huh. Yeah, I guess I still play the Bob first. I guess I still play the Bob first. I'm just going to fetch now. Um, actually, that was probably wrong. I probably should have... Just run out of Field of Ruin there. I am worried about Blood Moon, but that's probably an irrational fear. I think I just have a bit of Blood Moon-related PTSD. And there, they were not quite on Moon Mana yet unless they wanted to ritual it out, right? But still, these are the things that, that keep me up at night. <laughs> Alright, so they know about our Overgrown Tomb. Yeah, I mean, this Relic is uh, potentially going to be a bit annoying, but I guess we still just... Well, yeah, I guess we're gonna, we are going to play the Goyf instead of a second Bob. Because then we, if we play the Bob, we either can't hold up Fatal Push or we have to Shock. I don't know. Let's attack. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think we have to play the Goyf because at this stage we're a bit worried about taking too much more damage. Double Fatal Push in hand is going to stymie their... Um, the strength of their Bushwhacker turns to some degree. I think they missed their chance to Relic on my end step as well. Not necessarily to crack it, just to activate it. Alright, here they go. Steamkin, yep. I guess I'm just supposed to push this thing now. Alright, that'll do it. Okay, good enough for me. So, that was a mono red Steamkin Bushwhacker Experimental Frenzy deck. Um, not too sure about the nuances of, of such a deck, as you can see. Um, feel free to enlighten me in the comments, but seemed like a reasonably easy win to me, but granted, we had good progressions both games. All right, uh, this hand is a clunky keep. Clustered around the two drop slot without any good early interaction, but the hand has a lot of power. Lots of utility out of the land base, lots of, ooh, Valakut. Well, I got triple Field of Ruin. I don't know how good that will actually be, but we'll see. Sakura Tribe Elder. Fatal Push is not a good draw. So I like playing our quickest clock here, but Ooze is not an appreciably quicker clock than Bob. So even though our interaction is not that great against Valakut decks, I think Bob is still the correct play there. But being on the draw with a with a pretty mediocre hand against Valakut, we might indeed just be dead. Prismatic Omen. All right. Well, I mean, thought seizing is going to put us below that magic number of 18, but we pretty clearly have to do it. The question is, do we want a Field of Ruin the Valakut first? Don't think that accomplishes anything right now. So I guess it's going to be Thought Seize and then probably Fetch Play and Ooze. Well, they're interestingly out of lands, basically. Um, yeah, so it's going to be the Titan. Because they need more lands to scape shift than, they've, uh, than they're have than they anywhere near having. I think we have to... Mm, tough call here, actually. Very tough call. 
I think at this point we just shock. We want access to double black, obviously, and, and double green doesn't seem bad either. Alright, our clock is fairly anemic. We just kind of have to hope they brick on lands. Not sure what costs for, to be honest. Uh, the hard cast search for tomorrow. Uh, that's a pretty good draw. That's what they need to hit is, is this type of ramp. Abrupt decay. We have got all the fatal pushes in the world. They are not going to help us out very much at all. So... Valakut, if you control at least five other mountains. Scape shift. This lets them... So Prismatic Omen is letting them basically combo off only needing six lands on the field, if I'm correct. I actually have very little experience against Valakut. Nobody I know plays it. Um, it's just kind of when I run into it online and I haven't bothered to learn the ins and outs of it because it's because <laughs> it's valicate it's just it's just one of the most straightforward decks in the format basically but I think uh, I think these fields of ruin are pretty poor as things stand and I don't think we gain a ton from you, from utilizing them as things stand, because a natural land drop doesn't hurt us with a Valakut trigger yet. And I guess technically it thins out their deck a little bit, makes them a little less likely to hit that natural land drop, but I think we're just supposed to fire up the Hissing Quagmire and get in. That actually seems kind of bad. That actually seems a bit bad simply because its clock is so anemic. So maybe I will use the field and then eat a couple creatures with the ooze and that will have the same result. Why don't we do that? Same result as in still putting across six damage this turn. Well, they hit the land, so good times. <laughs> our shuffle, our shuffle is what killed us. The, sh the shuffle we gave them, rather. Yep, that's uh, that's scape shift, that's titan shift for you. You can't th thought sees the top of the deck as the saying goes. That is all right. And we're very, very dead to all of this. So, in the interest of time, we will not make them click like we might if it were a league. Um, so, Fatal Push is a card that comes out as is Abrupt Decay, and of course our hand was flooded with those, which was not really great for us. Um, Liliana, the last hope, is not very exciting either. So these are all candidates to be cut. We love our Fulminator Mage here. We absolutely love it. Um, this is a Surgical Extraction matchup. I think we want both. Um, collective Brutality is fine to hit their ramp spells. And, and Scape Shift itself, of course. And... All right, so we've got enough to bring in with this with uh, with Nicholas's build that we can just move all seven of those over, and from here, Maelstrom Pulse and Kitchen Finks are, are basically considerations. I think Golgari Charm is a bit too cute. Um, it can basically kill Prismatic Omen, and that's fine. But Pulse can do that. Pulse can kill Titan. Pulse can kill uh, other value creatures they bring in, 
So Kitchen Finks is the other consideration. But I don't really see anything I'd rather cut. Maybe, like, this is a bit of a race. Maybe we're supposed to shave some number of tracker for some number of finks. Is two tracker out, two finks in? Is that too much? Uh, maybe. What if we hedge one tracker, one scoos? I kind of like that. We'll see how it goes. Maybe we can take away a land with blackmail. How cool would that be? That's that's my goal. That's my goal in this uh, game two and game three if we get there. Let's thought seize your land, please. <laughs> that would be awesome. Why, yes, I will play first. And there's no blackmail here, but the hand's good enough. Okay, they've got three lands. They've got Wood Elves, Sakura Tribe Elder, Summoner's Pact, Primeval Titan. So they've got a very well-balanced hand, and I think we... Ah, I was going to say we just take the cheapest ramp spell, which is Sakura Tribe Elder, but the Wood Elves is an expendable blocker um, that can actually trade with our Confidant and wall off his attacks after it's resolved, they don't need to sack it to get value like they do with Tribe Elder. So I think I actually want to take the Wood Elves. Um, either that or we just take the Titan and let them ramp. This is a tough spot. Um, maybe I am just supposed to take the Titan. I can believe that. We don't have a good clock this game either. If we had a turn two Tarmogoyf, I might consider uh, taking away the Wood Elves, or or indeed the Tribe Elder, depending on what else was going on. Fulminator is a good one, but still no third land. We're having another painful progression as well. However, Bobby should help us hit that third land, and then we, we might be putting something together. Here comes the Elder. Yep. Third land. Tireless Tracker. Kitchen Finks. Dude. Dude. Not good. Well, I think, I think we just lost the game right then and there. To be honest. Don't expect us to come back from from that major whiff. And uh, yeah, I have to say that was that was pretty unlucky. Here's the wood elves, and I don't even think it's it's worth trophying anything here. Oh boy! All right, they're gonna have the summoners packed. We are just pretty dead to that. Yeah, we've got a got to hang on to our trophies, as awful as this is. Um, Tarmogoyf, Verdant Catacombs. All right, well, I mean, now we just, <sighs> man, missing that land just, just killed us. Because now we basically have to hold up trophy here, unless, well, no, unless we just play Fulminator. And then hope to draw a land next turn and have a double spell turn. Yeah, maybe we just play Fulminator and Stone Rain him. We need to get a forest here, I guess, so we can play these Finks at some point. Man, how good would you have been last turn, guy? At this rate, we might lose to these weenie beats anyway. <laughs> We've had a very painful progression. So 
So they did, they did end step that elder. Wonder if they found another Titan naturally. And I wonder if I should trade my Bob for these Wood Elves. The, the big questions, the big questions of our time. They've got an obstinate Bayloth. That's a good one. Oh, they don't want to trade their Wood Elves for my Bob. Well, drawing another Bob is awful. Awful, awful, awful there. But... Ah... <sighs> Drawing another land is good. So, there's no instant in any yard, so I guess we have to hold, I guess we have to play Tarmogoyf and hold up trophy here. Tarmogoyf can rumble with the Bayloth if we can put an instant in the yard profitably. But, the way, the texture of this game, the way we're kind of in an impasse and a standoff, everything is just against us. Like, their top deck inevitability is huge. We're under a ton of pressure, life total-wise. None of this is good. <laughs> None of this is any good. All right. What did they pack for? They packed for a what else? Okay, they have the scape shift, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we destroy a mountain with all the triggers on the stack, that doesn't work, right? Because they get to go get another one. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, as you can tell, this matchup is, is very bad for us. As I'm sure you all already knew. But we have been able to escape with some wins. Alright, destroy your mountain. Just out of spite. But yeah, we've got... Um, like I said, there's a lot against us in this matchup. We have been able to escape with some wins against them um, in league matches lately, actually. Oh yeah, so that does work. Right, okay. Um, well, we're still down to five. We're still dead to some natural land drops. But when, then again, we've got trophy for this Valakut. So the top deck inevitability, again, from them is, is out of control. But... Apparently that was the play to make there. All right, we got an Urborg. All right. Um, sadly, we cannot play Thinks and hold up Trophy. Actually, it's not even holding up Trophy. We just have to straight up slam our Trophy here um, in order to not die to just land drops. We've got to take care of this Valakut, so I guess it's Tracker into Urborg into Trophy is our line, and we've got to hold the Goyf back. Oh, our opponent's just tired of us taking too long? Okay. <laughs> Pretty sure you had one in, that one in the bag, my friend, but... Tourney practice lobby. Okay. Let's try to manually join this one so we're not... Facing the same matchup that we just faced. Well, I was curious to see how that would have gone. That's a, that's a bit disappointing that they just skipped town. It's not like we were taken forever. We were only a couple minutes behind them on the clock. Um, this is a mall. There's too many three drops to make this high risk payoff worthwhile, right? Right. Okay. I mean. It's not great either, but... <sighs> blackmail? Do we keep a blackmail on top? I don't think we do. 
Yeah, I mean, our hand is slow, right? And we need interaction. But, oof. Is this a mirror? Might be a mirror. But blackmail doesn't speed up our hand at all. Blackmail, and, and blackmail is of course very bad as your only discard spell compared to other targeted discard spells. So I think bottoming that was correct. I mean, we need we need to hit our third and, and indeed fourth land with this hand, or at least we did before we started getting thought seized, right? Scooze is looking a little whatever right now because, again, we wanted to see lands, and right now we only have access to one green. Looks like it's a mirror match. I'm very unhappy about the mirror given my hand in the, that, I, that I had to mull and that I'm on the draw. All of these things are bad for our prospects here. Okay. Dark Confidant makes me want to do this because we really need to find a removal spell for him, and that's very tilting. <laughs> that's very, very tilting. Well, we're going to play Tarmogoyf. We will have the... the it, Pressure advantage. Confidant's going to pressure their own life total, and Goyf is a huge beating. That said, if they have a Liliana the Veil, or if they have a kill spell, to be honest, we're probably pretty dead here. Um, if we had our third land, though, we can cleanly answer the Bob. That said, I kind of expect them to have another discard spell. I think if they only had that Thought Seize, they would not have taken our redundant copy of Lily the Last Hope. They're attacking? Alright, is there going to be a follow-up collective brutality? Honestly, if there is, I don't care. I want this Bob off the field. And I don't have any other way to do it right now. I'll take that trade. Well, there's a creature in the yard, so I'm out of brutality range, too, as well. I'd should have thought of that right away, but I, I honestly don't know what what's coming here. Was that just a wild punt on the part of our opponent? Or did they feel bad for us because we mulliganed? And now they, they wanted to to restore parity. Whoa, that I guess that was just a, a huge punt. Um Yeah, well, I guess it's just time to play Lily Ticker up, huh? Well, let's attack with the Goy first. If they have a removal spell, maybe we'll buy him back. Trophy. Yep, you got it. Now instead, that makes me want to do this. Tracker into land. Well, this all worked out okay, but it required our opponent to just suicide their, their confidant into our Tarmogoyf. I, I won't say no to it, though. I, I can only imagine that they did have a collective brutality in hand and were hoping to... Yep, well, there we go. The, the read was correct, but... All right, Grimflare. Oh, boy. The main man, the Grimflare. I love it. I love to see the flare. Well, um... This is actually a tad awkward, because we don't have a clean answer to the flare, and it's going to rack up a ton of value. So what I'm supposed to do here, I believe is play the Lily and minus her. This is card advantage, and if they finish her off with the Flare, they don't get the trigger. So, Lily minus it is. Tough call here as well. Um, I think it's actually going to be a Tarmogoyf, because I want something that outsizes that Flare immediately. Tough call, though. 
and that also lets me run out this blooming marsh without quote unquote wasting it. And uh, with how many mana sinks I have on the field, I have uh, I have field of ruin. I have a clue. I have uh, Scoo's activations potentially next turn. Like we just we just really are incentivized to make that land drop, you know. The Grim Flare attacking the Grim Flare. I mean, you can't trust anybody anymore. It's coming at me, so they like the uh, they like getting the trigger, and I don't blame them. It's a very powerful effect. Did they just put nothing into the yard? That's a little terrifying. Well, that's a little frightening, I have to say. Alright. Couple good cards we've got going on here, so I think... Yeah, I think we have to play Goyf and Bob. Scoos we can slow roll for just another turn. And I don't know that it really matters who we shrink here. So we'll just... Yeah, I can't see it mattering. We've had a, a couple turns now where we've got one one land kind of awkwardly not doing anything for us, so it hasn't been the most efficient. But we do have a lot of gas still still rolling. If we can keep our Liliana alive this turn, that's going to be huge. Obviously, we've got a clue. We've got the Scoos. Okay. We're not really going to keep our Lily alive, it seems, but... I mean, I, I was kind of asking for a mana-efficient turn, and now I'm going to have one. <laughs> I'm going to get to crack a clue, but we're going to lose out on our Liliana. Feels bad. Only Grimflare attacking Lily. Sure, you got it. You don't get the trigger that way. Alright, now if they don't have a way to kill this Bob, we still might be in pretty good shape, but they do. That's a nice last card, not gonna lie. Assassin's Trophy, huh? So yeah, we're going to trophy something in response to their lily taking up. That's the plan. Well, I mean, they kept all three cards on top with their Grim Flyer trigger, so we knew they were going to draw some really good stuff. Yep, just got to take that hit. And I think it is the Lily I'm going to trophy away here. Let's 
just going to do this stuff now. And we draw Lily of our own. That's a nice one. So a couple options here, we can just leave the ooze back to block, or we can plan on blocking with Hissing Quagmire. Interesting call. Interesting call. They get the flare trigger even if we trade with Quagmire, so I think we're supposed to leave the ooze back for this turn. It also gives us insurance against a kill, uh, kill spell that they draw. So sure, I can, I can believe that we're supposed to pass for this turn. Try to really ensure that our Liliana goes to town. All right, time to gobble up some things. I think we'll just leave a Tarmogoyf in the yard. Okay. Seems pretty good, guys. Seems pretty good. Here we get to uh, fire up the Quagmire in response to the Edict and sacrifice that. And they'll scoop to that. Sweet. All right, we got there. I also didn't mention it, but notice how we took them off of Delirium. Um, that's definitely something you want to be doing with, with Scavenging Ooze against a Grim Flayer deck. So... This is the BGX mirror. Out come the discard, including our our spice known as Blackmail. Um, Maelstrom Pulse Triple Kitchen Fink seems pretty solid here. EE and Spellbomb are considerations. Fulminator Mage. Uh, Damnation. We can cut the brutality as well. So let's start by bringing in these three things, or these four things. And is there anything else we don't really love? I don't know. I mean, I think basically just cutting the discard is fine. So we almost have too much to do in a weird way against a, a mirror match. That's not obviously the worst thing, but it's still, still making me take a second look. And a lot of this stuff here. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're pretty much fine with everything that's in there right now. So... EE -E seems good, especially when they're showing me the flare. I'll take a spell bomb, and I'll take two Fulminators. Maybe we leave out the Damnation. Maybe Fulminator is less good against straight Golgari. Let's, let's actually try the Damnation. I like to kind of... I don't like to linger too long on sideboarding in, uh, in these tourney practice lobby games because you never know when somebody's just going to leave. <laughs> Especially when I'm recording for the channel. Uh, opponent will keep seven, so will we. We don't want them all. Our hand is Clunk City, but we don't want them all.
Yeah, I'm fine just running out the treetop there. Obviously, we could have played uh, Spellbomb, but whatever. Not, not the largest concern at the moment. However, we, uh, you know, our, our hand is actually quite bad. The draw of Kitchen Finks was pretty bad. We've got a lot of value. Okay, Tarmogoyf. I was really afraid there of a Bob. Really afraid of a Confidant there. So I'm going to run out the Spell Bomb, and I almost certainly am going to Cantrip on the end step, because we just really need to hit our third land. If they've got a Liliana of some kind, if they've got a draw engine of some kind, none of that's good. Okay, they don't seem to. Okay, we did it. Liliana's a good one. That's the play. We've got all the gas in the world in our hands. I mean, any any draw is a good draw here. Tracker into land, sweet. Kitchen Finks is sweet. They've got Tracker into land of their own. Okay, Assassin's Trophy. You know, I think I actually have to trophy away that Tracker before it gets out of control. This also sets our Lily back to two. So, let's do that. And I think I'm going to pitch my Damnation, because I don't see it... Like, I've got to have more creatures than them. <laughs> I've just got to. So, it was either that, or maybe pitch the Fulminator Mage, but... I think I can pitch the Damnation here. So, very awkward and clunky turn. We're going to give them a clue activation on the end step here we don't get to make a fourth land drop of our own we're very behind in that regard but again the power the gas in our hand i'm pretty confident at this point we're going to get there um i might be less confident against something like jund because then they could with with for example a blood bright elf they could take the lily off the field and catch back up on card advantage so that is one there are windows in which Bloodbraid Elf gives Jund such such the ability to to catch back up or to turn the corner or both. Um, that's a good one. That's a good one. You guys know that I think Golgari is better than Jund overall, but it's close and I respect where Jund has the edges. Oh, they're not buying anything back, huh? Well, fair enough. Okay, so it's time to go on the tracker plan of our own, and now I guess Fulminator Mage is the pitch of choice. There goes a Collective Brutality. Hmm. You know, I actually might want to fetch now in case they have Fatal Push, because there's no Revolt Trigger. If they have a Decay or Trophy, then they got me. I'm going to try it now. Good. We did it. We don't get to bluff anything this way. Oh, well.
Yep, it's the Lily, the Lily Wars. We are still ahead on cards, but uh, that Lily, the Last Hope, looks like she's just gunning for the alt. So. Interesting call here. Um, I guess tracker into clue is, is into land is still still the play. But if we do that, we're pitching a Finx to our own Lily, and then to their Lily. That's pretty awful, to be honest. Losing both of our Finks without playing either of them. But I guess. That's just where we're at. Hmm. Maybe we should maybe we should play the Finx, actually. Maybe we should play the Finx and pressure their planeswalkers. I'm gonna go with that line. I'll discard one Finx and play the other. Actually, I'm going to discard a tracker. Probably won't matter, but... I'm going to lose the other one, almost certainly. Fatal push. Interesting game two here. This is game two, right? I'm not uh, not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure it's game two. Definitely an interesting one. Yep, you got it. So if their Veil ticks up, I guess I am cracking a clue in response to see, just to get more information. They've got a Bob. Yep. And they're not taking up their Lily of the Veil, huh? Very interesting. All right, we draw a Lily of our own. Now I don't know what to do, because edicting is the asymmetrical thing to do, but yeah, and I, I, I think I am supposed to just edict. Whatever they have, if they sandbagged it, they can almost certainly play it in response. Maybe it's another Planeswalker, that would be the only real reason not to, but I want to edict here. And then we'll try to finish off their Lily of the Veil. Fatal push. You got it. So now we just go wide. We're dead to a damnation. But if they can't rip a, a languish or a damnation, they're in big trouble. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm liking this deck. I'm I'm liking the the grinding power of all these trackers and and everything. 
So they kill the persisted Finks. They drew a fatal push. I mean, the stuff's all really good. That was a, that was a good draw for them. So now uh, we do get to... Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful draw. So we get to... Just pressure the last hope down off of ultimate range and kill the veil. Absolutely great for us. And now they, uh, you know, they're still in it. They can buy something back with Lily the Last Hope maybe twice. Um, they just ripped a card off the top, but heck of a game. Heck of a game. Tireless Tracker, which is who they bought back and land was their draw for turn. That's a pretty good little sequence. Lots of value there, but looks like we will be able to clean that up a bit. Crack a clue. Tarmogoyf. That's a fine one, but I want to make sure the Lily dies this turn. So I'm not going to do anything besides attack with both. Because they obviously can crack a clue. Find a fatal push here. Yeah, I am going to run that out because I... I'm look like I'm going to be ticking up with Lily next turn, so I'm just increasing the odds that I can empty my hand and and not disc have to discard anything to my own activation. Obviously, I'll regret that if I rip a tireless tracker off the top, but these are the types of uh, things you can't really be sure about. Okay, well, it paid off. Not really sure what the opponent can have that they've held two cards in hand here. Languish is out of their hand, sure. Man, this Liliana the Veil has put in so much work this game. I love it. And we do have lethal on board, and they're just gonna scoop it up. All right, that was a cool, uh, that was a cool two and zero against the mirror, and neither game looked great for us from the outset. However, these games go long, and we got there, and that was good. 
It was good. It was good. It was good. Let's play again. Let's play again, fellas. Ooh, pre-cut muffin. I like that name. Hey, we want a die roll. Keep. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Keep all day. Opponent takes a mull. Always kind of start... <laughs> My eyes light up in anticipation when I've got a double discard spell hand and our opponent takes a mull. That is often extremely good for us. Whoa, I don't know what this deck is. It's just some kind of ooze tribal. Love it. Love the ooze tribal. They've got double ether vial. I think I'm supposed to just start taking away their oozes. <laughs> So let's take away this ooze. <laughs> Truly hilarious. I love it. So Blood Hall ooze. This is the Jund ooze, right? Yeah. If you control a black permanent, you get a counter. This thing is super, super duper ooze value. Right? Okay, so I think I am supposed to take the Blood Hall ooze away. Just because, actually, now that might not be true. Maybe we are supposed to... Maybe we are supposed to just play the goif. Start clocking. The risk for this is that my Inquisition might blank. Because they can go, they can play a vial... They can vial in the Blood Hallows, and maybe they don't have another target. But you know what? If they don't have another target, then I'm probably doing okay. Right? So, let's Inquisition. Oh, well, they do have a couple things. Grizzly Salvage in this deck? Interesting, and then Predator Ooze. This thing's indestructible. I'm taking that. And I don't think I care about these Ether Vials much, so I'm actually just going to decay the Blood Hall Ooze and get in for a, a pretty big swing here. So one of the reasons I, besides indestructibility, I took Predator Ooze is, of course, because that can be vialed in, and they might not be able to really cast this Grizzly Salvage anytime soon. They need to not only hit an actual land drop, but it has to be a black land. So that's pretty good for us. Um, Lily of the Veil is also pretty good for us. Let's attack with the Goy first, see if we can draw any vialed creatures out, I suppose. Now, we could do a couple different things here. I'm actually just going to play out the tracker, though. They don't seem like a deck that can afford to pack any removal to speak of, so pretty safe. Obviously, Lily ticking up is was a consideration there, too, but this opens us up for a really good turn this turn, potentially. Oh, another Lily, sure. Well, we're just attacking. Hopefully they didn't draw another indestructible ooze that they can vial in. That would be bad. But we could at least edict it. Uh-oh. Vial on three. No, they did it! That's hilarious. Oh well. We got this.
I hope Scavenging Ooze isn't too upset that we're just slaughtering all of his kinsmen. <laughs> I wonder if their deck plays Scavenging Ooze. Ironically, probably not. It doesn't seem very good in their deck. Um, they would d be depending on... They would be dependent on facing a deck like ours that puts a lot of stuff in the graveyard for Skoos to really do much there. But then again, they're a Grizzly Salvage deck, so... Who on earth knows? Grizzly Salvage is a little awkward with this Ancient Ziggurat, though. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. All right, if they vial a push target in here, we might have the perfect turn. Either way, we look like we're going to win this pretty cleanly. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm not really sure why they didn't have this larger vial ticking up toward 5 so they can try to get this my mitotic slime down, because that seems like their best way to stabilize, but... <sighs> Inexorable blob. What on earth does this do? Delirium. When it attacks, you create a 3-3 three, three green ooze that's tapped and attacking. They have instant... They have creature. They're not delirious quite yet. Now they can finish off our Lily of the Veil, but then they're probably just dead on the crackback. Yep, the, the Ooze Tribal could not quite get there against us. Alright. So I guess we are just basically treating this like a normal creature matchup. Golgari Charm doesn't seem too good. Um, I don't know, Damnation, yeah, probably. Maybe Collective Brutality. Some number of Kitchen Finks. Um, I guess I'm just going to cut away some discard spells to begin with. I kind of want to leave Thought Seizes in to hit that Mitotic Slime or whatever it was called, and maybe some other things. So that puts us at 60 right there. Um, Lily the Last Hope might not actually have the most targets for clean kills. So I can see Shaving 1. Um, yeah, you know what? I kind of just like cutting away some discard here and bringing in a big pile of kitchen things. That seems good. Maybe we want the other brutality, though, so maybe three things is a little excessive. It's not like they're that aggressive. Like, they, they don't pressure our life total that well. Um, they seem to be more... You know, doing things like creating multiple oozes, getting a lot of value, or being indestructible, things like this. I can keep. It's the no interaction keep, but we're doing it. Experiment one. The other thing that's nice about Collective Brutality is it is another out to the indestructible stuff. At least while it's still a 2. You know, small enough to die to the minus 2, minus 2. Oh, they do have a Scooze. Well then. I should have known. Maybe it's a sideboard. Maybe it's a sideboard ooze. Who knows? Alright, decision time. We've got Dark Confidant or Goyf. <sighs> well, I still have faith in the fact that they're not pressuring our life total to an insane degree, so I am going to play the Bob here. It's very possible that they can just attack 
through the Tarmogoyf, at least with that experiment one anyway, after evolving another time, but... Oh man, I don't know what this card does either. Corrupted Zendikon. Enchanted Land is a 3-3 black ooze, it's still a land. When Enchanted Land dies, return that card to its owner's hand? Well, jeez. I think I have to take a block here. The clock actually did just get kind of real. Um, I'm gonna block. I'm gonna block the ruse. This is hilarious. I love it. Collective brutality. I guess that is likely enough to have other targets. higher priority targets that I should just play the Goyf here instead. The pressure, the pressure from the Ooze Tribal is pretty real. And you know, they're choked on land enough that maybe Experiment 1 was the better, the better one to block there, but it is... Difficult to say. I can't say that I'm an expert at piloting against the the Jund Ooze deck. Is it even Jund? Did, did we even see red? I mean, we saw Blood Hall Ooze, so yeah. Yeah, Jund Oozes. I mean, call me a noob. I don't, I don't know what the exact best lines <laughs> necessarily are. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. What's going on here? So they're attacking with the experiment one? Why not with this thing? What am I missing? Or am I just going to get blown out by something? Whatever. Paying costs. Necrotic Wound. Alright, so they tried to give it minus one, minus one, but instead they just grew it, and it stayed the same. Oh no, I'm, I'm sorry my friend, that did not, that did not go as planned. Well. I mean, I guess uh, that happens sometimes. So they've got Delirium, they've got Undergrowth from Necrotic Wounds, so maybe I should have considered bringing in a Spellbomb or two for this matchup. But regardless of that, I think after that little exchange, we are going to kind of coast to victory here. A couple clues off of Tracker is pretty awesome. Minus X, minus X, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Okay. Once again, they have an, a forest and an ancient ziggurat. Well, they've got, they do have the swamp as well. Um, they had another necrotic wound. So there goes uh, Mist Tracker. There goes the tracker. But the good news is we got another one. Keep on clocking with the goif. And obviously we've got all kinds of card advantage going on now. Even if they find one of their major value oozes, I don't really see how we lose from here. We have collective brutality to kill the indestructible thing. They're nowhere near casting like that five drop that makes a million oozes kind of keeps dividing when it dies. Uh, we are the aggressor now terms of board presence and life totals so I think I think we're gonna take down ooze tribal guys I think we've got it <laughs> uh, 
opponents in the tank, though, so who knows Who knows what they could have. Could be anything. Could be just about literally anything. Alright, we get to crack clues on the end step here. We found a kitchen thing, eh? So... Playing a Finx, cracking a clue is pretty much all we're going to do, so I guess playing the Blooming Marsh is more efficient. And we will attack, because we can crack a clue during combat if need be. So we'll attack first. Grizzly Salvage, you got it. So they reveal a couple Predator Oozes, which is the indestructible guy, a Stixer Supplier, which is spicy, and a Blood Hall Ooze in an unclaimed territory. Looks like they took the Predator, one Predator into their hand, that is. They get to buy back that land. Wonder if they have any landfall synergies as well, that'd be kinda cool. Alright, that was a good turn for us, even though they got some you know, they they got some good value while they blocked and, and so on and so forth, but All right, I guess we will begin by making a clue and then cracking a clue. All right, um, yeah, let's just turn him sideways. Predator Ooze is going to get viled in and block one of them, but then we can... Collective Brutality. Take it down after the fact. And I guess I'm pretty happy to escalate to pitch my Damnation, because that's certainly not a card I'm interested in anymore. Kill the Predator... Drain you for two. That's going to do it. Oh, and you know what? There was no sorcery in the yard, but yeah, there's no real way I could have gotten lethal there beforehand. Either way, no big deal. We had him. We had him six ways to Sunday, my friends. We, sh we showed them who the real ooze was. The only real ooze in modern is scavenging ooze. I'm sorry. The, the other oozes just don't quite cut it. Although it's a very cool deck. I wish wish our opponent luck with, with his brew. And uh, yeah, there's some new oozes coming out in Guilds of Ravnica, actually. So who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be proven wrong as time goes on. Maybe the ooze tribal will become tier one. I'll keep this hand. I should... I should be done. I, I should honestly probably have been done after that game, but I kind of want to play one more. Hopefully it's not a really long, grindy one, but either way, it'll be my last game. I hope you guys are enjoying the uh, tournament practice lobby adventures, as always. Looks like we are against uh, maybe Storm, but you don't usually see Storm playing Fetchlands. Um, also, these tap ETB tap lands are pretty awkward. They're making me at least consider running one of them out, but I think we should Inquisition.
Yeah, it's Storm. They are just playing fetches. So, uh, we will take a ritual because we're going to push that Electromancer. Or we're going to be able to push it. Maybe edict it as well, depending on how everything shakes out. They've got all the powerful cards in their hand. They've got the win condition. They've got gifts ungiven and passed in flame. So our only hope is to just gate them on mana. Looks like they are going to run out the Electromancer. Okay. I think I still have to push here, even though we do have the ability to play Bob. This also lets us Lily next turn, so yeah. Alright, we want them to brick on lands for a little while. Even them drawing a, a cost reducer would be not that bad for us. And they did brick on lands, so let's hope they don't have unsubstantiate or remand. Because Lily's going to put in all kinds of work if, if she resolves. Nice. We're going to pick Trophy for sure. For sure our worst card going right now. Now are they able to find a land? No, they were not. Okay, we get to have a great turn. I guess we're going to Inquisition first. Hmm. Baral... Grape Shot, Lightning Bolt. Huh. Very interesting. I think I'm going to take the Lightning Bolt. Then we'll pitch our field, play the treetop, play the bob. Okay, that was a nice turn. And now even if they draw a land, you know, like, obviously they're slow rolling the Baral because they need to deploy him alongside like a land drop and a ritual now or now just another another land drop basically but um, it was pretty safe to, to take him away there in my opinion now I'm not sure why they shocked in here yeah uh, that's beyond me because they can't do anything with that mana Yeah, I think I think I'm just gonna kill the Burrell here. Even though we can get something out of their hand asymmetrically. Mana is still what's gating them, so. And we can play the ooze, and I guess we fire up the treetop village rather than gobble up a bunch of things with ooze. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah. All right, opponent's seen enough. Cool. Cool. Yeah, we had we had a really good progression there, to be honest, against Storm. Um, we definitely don't like these CMC two removal spells here, especially not Trophy Lily, the Last Hope, not accomplishing much. We, you know, we've got some slow stuff too, namely Tireless Tracker. That's probably gonna come out as well. Let's see what, what this build has that we're interested in. I like Surgical. I like Collective Brutality. I like Golgari Charm and Maelstrom Pulse. I guess we want both. I guess we want both. EE for sure, although this is kind of a lot against the Empty the Warrens plan, but it's probably still fine. Um, probably still worth bringing in all of that stuff. Pulse and EE at least can still, in, in some situations kill their cost reducers as well so if we just cut two trackers which are pretty bad here anyway this is totally fine um yeah there's not much else we really are interested in here so let's do it now this is our last match and i haven't cast a blackmail yet come on deck show me the blackmail show me a triple discard first two turns where we go Inquisition into Thoughtseize into Blackmail. That's what I want. That's what Grimflayer MTG is requesting. Yeah, this, this deck honestly seems pretty sweet. Um, I can see where the fourth tracker is just a little bit little bit hard to justify when we've only got 24 lands and only four fetch lands. Um, I could just see that fourth tracker being a Kalidus somewhat easily, but, but you know, and, and of course the blackmail hasn't really come up. And if we make those two changes, then it's not that different from my list. But still, you know, uh, those are the things I'd be maybe looking at. But I, I do like the idea of the blackmail in the context of a very draw-heavy deck. So, like I said in my review of this list, it all seems very coherent to me. Um, but then again, a more stock list, a more middle-of-the-road list like mine, also seems coherent to me, so who knows. But I am enjoying this list, I am enjoying these games, and all that good stuff. Our opponent did have to mull once, but they kept a six and they let on a, a cantrip, so it seems pretty good. We will lead on a discard spell, which also seems pretty good. Thought sees you. Wow, it's a one lander. Okay. Okay, I can I can work with that. Um I don't know what the take is here. We do have a Fatal Push for a Mana Bear. Remand is also a good one. Mana Morphos is also a good one. But I think I'm going to take a Mana Bear and just really try to strand them on Mana, like, long term. To the point where even if they hit a second land, we've got a push for their first Mana Bear. I don't know. Yeah, there's some arguments for Remand and Mana Morphos there, too. I don't think you're supposed to take the Grape Shot there. Serum Visions was a good draw, though, but it didn't do it for him. Um, I guess we just play out our Grizzly Bear here. Certainly would prefer a Tarmogoyf or a Confidant in that particular window, but if they stay on one land, the Grizzly Bear is going to get it done. They've got the second land, sure. But we'll get to play a Hissing Quagmire, push the Electromancer, or the Baral, rather, and then eat him. Get in for three. Or are they... They're slow rolling the Baral. That is interesting. That is very, very interesting. Not gonna lie. If they want a good remand... 
target, I'm not going to give them one, but maybe they're afraid of Liliana of the Veil. They're respecting the Lily, which, I mean, I respect that decision, that's for sure. So, anyway... I think I actually want to play the Field of Ruin here rather than the Quagmire, so I can maybe end step, hit the vents, and, and that might matter. I don't know. Let's just attack. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to eat the Electromancer and hold up Fatal Push. Play my Quagmire. Well, we have drawn an awkward number of Fields of Ruin. I mean, of course we have Tracker, but Tracker is not particularly exciting here. And the problem with all these Fields is that we can't hold up Fatal Push if we go Tracker into land, next turn at least. Unless we, we see a different land off the top, which is bad for other reasons, but we at least kind of wasted their turn. And we're going to continue wasting their turn unless they hit more land drops or unless they just decide they cannot afford to do nothing anymore. Looks like they're really, really afraid of a Liliana. Hmm. Inquisition of Kozilek, huh? I still don't like not holding up Fatal Push. And I still don't like running a tracker out into Remand, so I think I have to Inquisition here. And if they Remand this, so be it. That's actually just fine with me. They're not going to. Um, so pieces of the puzzle cannot get lands, it is only instants and sorceries. I'm normally afraid of that card, but I'm not really afraid of it right now. I think I might just take the remand. Either that or the ritual. Maybe I should just take the ritual. This remand is getting them nowhere. Yeah, I'll take a ritual away. A little surprised to see them not really, like, cycle a monomorphos or something on the end step, but I'm certainly no Storm player, so... But I, I just don't know how much longer they can afford to keep doing nothing. But they did hit a land, so that's good. Good for them. Now they can just cast a pieces of the puzzle, I suppose. Unless they want to do the Baral with Remand backup, but... We can just cast our Fatal Push twice here. They'll get their value, but we'll get our we'll get our kill. Okay, they are going to remand. their grape shot. You got it. 
All right, now we can go track her into land, but that puts us shields down, but we don't have anything better to do, so I guess that's it. Is this going to be enough? I mean, if we decide it's safe to fire up the Quagmire, we will have lethal next turn. Even if we don't necessarily do that between cracking clues and eating that Baral, we might get there anyway. That said, our resources have more or less been depleted. We're, we're basically on the plan of turning these lands into clues, but that's of course quite slow. And they found another Baral, which is very good. But can they put anything together right now? They get a two mana pieces of the puzzle, but that's not going to be quite enough. Looks like they're trying to put something better together, which I think is correct. Uh, if they have, like, Ritual into Gifts, yeah, they don't have it. All right, they don't have it. They don't have it. So, we took Storm down to nothing. Very good. Very, very good stuff. So if I am not mistaken, we went 4 and 1 here with Nick Sanchez's 4 bob 4 tracker um one blackmail list. Unfortunately, we didn't get to blackmail anybody. This is the second time I've brought this card to a uh, a romp through the tourney practice lobby and I have not cast it. Now I did bottom it. I did bottom it once after a mulligan. You know, I think it was the correct call, but maybe I should have just kept it on top for fun. So we we continue to not be able to blackmail people into doing what we want. We just have to, you know, be a little bit more invasive by seizing their thoughts and, and you know, having an Eldrazi mind meld them or whatever the heck's going on there. So verdict is still out on blackmail. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I really want to like this card, like I said in the assessment of of uh, Nicholas Sanchez's deck. Maybe I'm slightly overrating it because of how unique and, and how cool it is. You know, it's a very... It's an effect that you don't see anywhere else, really, where it's a targeted discard spell. You can choose the target, and you can still take a land. That's pretty unheard of in modern. And, you know, everything else about the card is cool, right? The the old printing, I love the art, you know, the, the name's cool. Uh, the flavor text is cool, so maybe the whole package has got me a little bit oversold on this card. But I think there's some potential here, and like I said in my rundown of this deck, I think it looks set up to excel in the context of this particular shell, where, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> where you are set up to grind really, really well with all these trackers and all these bobs. Therefore, a higher premium is placed on interacting early, which our one mana discard spells excel at, to make sure you stay alive long enough to start going off with cards like Tireless Tracker. It also mitigates the downside of having so many one mana discard spells, because if you've got the velocity of, of Confidant and Tracker working at capacity, you can afford a slightly higher density of bad top decks in the late game. So. I, that's my that's the logic that I see behind this list, and that's why I really like it. Um, seems really good to me. And I, I believe we went 4-1, dropping a match only to our worst-tiered matchup, our literal worst-tiered matchup, which is Titan Shift. So I will take it. Now, granted, we, you know, we, we faced mostly real decks. We did face an Ooze Tribal. Um, no, no disrespect to that pilot or that build, but it's not exactly a tiered deck. Otherwise, we were facing mostly good stuff. And, uh, and yeah, just yet another good display with Golgari. Um, I don't have too much more to say about this particular list. We saw that that three Kitchen Finks is a little bit of an awkward number, potentially. I don't remember the exact matchups where we thought it, but it's like, yeah, we want some Finks, but do we really want all three? You know, the Ooze matchup admittedly was one of them, but still, I can see that being being a tad much. I love the card Kitchen Finks. I'm surprised at how well it's done for me in this deck, but I think I might cap it at two. Um, other than that, 
I don't know. Obviously, the, we need more games on a match on on a deck like this, but so far so good for a first run out. It's pretty sweet. So, um, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks again to all of my patrons and and to everybody who's not a patron. Um, thank you for supporting the channel in whatever way you can. Subscriptions are amazing. I want to hit that 1,000 subscribers goal, and we are slowly but steadily ticking up, approaching 300. Um, hitting the 1,000 subscribers mark is a huge benchmark. So if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, um, and if you're enjoying this content, please, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. You know, like, share, comment, all this stuff is great. And if you want to financially support what it is I'm doing here, follow the link in the description below to my Patreon page. You can find out how you can get down on the tier rewards. It's a really good time. So um, thanks again to everybody who's supporting the channel however they can. And let me know what you think about these games, what you think about the deck. I hope you enjoyed the tourney practice lobby, live coverage, and I don't know what I'm going to do next on this channel. It's going to depend how my weekend goes, but maybe we'll do a competitive league um, via replay. Maybe I'll just play a competitive league, not live recording, and just focus, and then we'll upload the replay for you. Um, not sure what my free time levels are going to be like in the next several days, but we'll come up with something for you. So anyway, as always, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in, and keep your eyes on the channel. We've got more gameplay to come, more deck techs, more analysis, more of everything. So... Let me know what you think about all this, and I will see you for the next video. I hope you have a great night, and I will talk to you soon.